Welcome to another episode of Interviews. Today's topic, guys, I'm going to guess it's going to be a hot one. What we got going on today? Can a person with a high sex drive have a successful relationship with a person that has a low sex drive? Damn. (laughs) Here's the thing. Okay, here's my opinion on that one. I think it can work with patience. I say this to say men typically don't have patience all right now i've had this experience so i can speak on it um (laughs) i have not really been sexually pleased by you know my past partners like that or sexually compatible anyways um i think that with men they have a harder time or you guys have a harder time because you know You guys always do things pretty fast. Do I think it can work? I do. Um, If you learn the person's body, you know? So let's just say you you have your girlfriend, whatever. You break up with her. You go move on to the next person, the next sexual um, partner. You adapted a pattern from your last relationship. And a lot of times men kind of feel like every girl wants to be touched the same way or, you know, slept with the same way, touched, fucked, whatever you guys want to call it. And, and this will bring me back to one time I was asked, like I asked somebody, is sex ever bad? You know, a lot of times people say that girl's vagina was whack or that guy's penis was whack. Sex technically is not bad if you learn the person's body and you take the time to learn the person's body, unlearn your past, learn the, unlearn the, the last person but communicate with a person, ask them what they like and what they don't like. With patience, I think that you guys can build your own vibe and learn to like, learn each other, I guess. Do you know what I mean? The sex drive part though, hmm. I think the only way somebody has a high sex drive versus somebody who doesn't is when they mentally are checked out of something, right? So, you know, sometimes in the beginning you meet somebody and you guys are like, like having sex enough, but then it dies down because somewhere, somehow somebody mentally checks out of something. That's how I'm going to view it. That's what I think, um, based on my experience, um, the person may have cheated, maybe just to say that, or kids may be involved or, you know, pregnancy, some girls when they're pregnant, they can have sex more often. Some girls, like for myself, I didn't have that high sex drive type of thing, right? Um, As far as compatibility, I think that it can be built with the proper intimacy. I think that if you, again, communicate with the person, let them know. A lot of times we lie, we hide things. We don't tell you guys the truth all the time, by the way. Just to let you guys know, we don't always tell you guys the truth. We're very good at faking. Um, (laughs) But... I don't believe that it cannot happen. It's not possible to happen. So I do believe that it is possible for two people that may not be on the same page at the moment to bring themselves together and create magic. Yes, I think so. I think that's good. I fumbled a lot. How can one person that has a high sex drive be satisfied with someone that has a low sex drive, especially with a person with a high sex drive wanting more sex. Say they want more sex like three times a day, mm-hmm. but the low sex drive person is content with maybe once every three days. Like where would the balance be? Like where would the middle ground be? So do you think, okay, so sorry to answer a question with a question. A low sex drive, I still feel that a low sex drive is maybe it could be hormonal whatever the case may be but i really think it's the person that they're with i think it's the lack of combat compatibility sexually because you could be turned on by the person just physically but the moment they touch you it's like it goes i literally think i don't i just don't think it's like a high sex drive i just think that maybe the person's not putting that much effort into making the person feel good and and for us for females something that you're not doing in the relationship can hinder 
withhold it or we don't feel like having sex with you guys and that's how we cope i guess that's a lot of girls get men got affected by that because it's something that they're not doing i just i don't know if i believe in a low sex drive or anything like that i just think that that person mentally is not there physically not there with that person and there's some type of inconsistency or incompatibility that's what i feel i could be wrong correct me if i'm wrong you don't agree um, no, you're, you probably have a point. Incompatibility does does make a, a difference in terms of, like, because I can be with somebody, they say that they're one way, but then, you know, when I start to figure them out, that they don't want to not have all the time. So I get it. That's what I'm saying. And I think that a lot of times we try to pretend to be something that we're not just a piece of person, just through conversation. Um... And then when they're put on the spot, <laughs> this is where it's very important to talk, man. You have to be open and not be afraid to like scare the person away. A lot of times people are afraid to do that, right? So they they dumb themselves down or they, they make themselves suffer sexually just to pretend to fake and please the person, right? A lot of the times we do that, females. <laughs> By the way, females do that a lot. Disagree if you want, but we do. Could you be in a long distance relationship? Oh my God. I thought about this. Okay. I have been. And it's so... Because I, I, I like physical touch. And I'm a kissing whore. And I love to like touch my dude. That's the only reason why I would say No. And I can go a long time without sex. So that's why I would say, yeah, I can do that. For a man, if I'm in my mind now thinking, can my dude not have sex for a, an extended period of time? That's where my mind would wonder, right? I'd be like, eh, I don't know. Because now on that end, I'm thinking. And then I'm not in the city with him. You know what I'm saying? A next bad girl could walk back past him and tech with my man <laughs> so those are the things i would think if i knew for sure he was going to be loyal to me i would be okay with it but we'd have to make an effort to see each other a lot more though i can't say like it's going to be like a two two three months in between nah i can't do that so how how often is often then like what work are you seeing like every holiday every month every two months like what are you looking at here yeah, so it's not going to be no every holiday business. That's too long. I would say, listen, you're just a person that comes and checks me every so often in the city, but I can't call that a relationship. No way. Um, at this age, we should be able to, like, <laughs> be able to afford to go see each other a little bit more frequently, you know? Um, I would say twice a month. It would have to be that. I think that's fair. Twice a month? That's cute twice a month for a long distance relationship like how how long is the distance so that's i don't like, i guess that's what we have to consider right what yeah. if he lives in the states or what if he lives in mexico or something like mm. you can't, that can't be a twice a month thing yeah so it would definitely have to be close enough i'm not gonna deal with like that overseas overseas business no definitely not like i have to have access access to you like driving distance at least you know what i mean so you're saying like if you live in Toronto and he lives in London, that's something you can do. Or Windsor. Or oh, London, Ontario. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. yes, yes. I was like, I thought you said London, England. No. I'm like, I'm not. Because I've done that before. And that was so hard. It was hard to talk to a guy in, in England. The time zone. And then, yeah, the time zone, the time zone messed us up a lot. But why put yourself through that, though? Why put yourself through that? Because I was attracted situation? to the person. And, and for me, I'm such, like, a, a lover. Like, I'm, op I'm so open-minded. You know what I mean? I... I'm not going to not talk to you. I don't have that in me to say I've met this guy. He lives in another city and I'm like, okay, you you don't matter anyway. Like, you know, I'm not going to talk to you because you're going back home. I can't do that. So I guess this is my bad for just being an open-minded person. But I, if I like you, I like you. And I don't like people very often. So I'm going to take advantage of that and live in the moment with it and let the cards fall where they may. How long is too long for someone you are dating to respond to your text? Oh messages? my goodness. Let me tell you, <laughs> let me tell you guys something. I don't play that game, even with my friends. Okay. I am that 
woman. I need you to text me right away. I don't play those foolish games. No. Even with you. Like, if I... This is why I don't call people. Because I don't like when I call somebody and my calls don't go answered. All right? I take offense to that. I'm very sensitive when it comes to that shit. I don't have no energy to be waiting and 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 doing this play, play games. So funny. I was actually talking to this guy... Um, that I met at Redemption one time a couple years ago and we exchanged and I was just like boy why didn't you text me that night I'm that person you don't I don't know time listen if you give me my number text me that night like the vibe was there let's continue the vibe okay I do not play these foolish games I remember from back in the day when I was obviously living at home my mom we had house phones waiting by the phone for for a phone to ring like why is it a week going by or two weeks going by and, and and now you're calling me like that shit was we were playing that stuff back in the day but i never liked it i never knew how to like voice my opinion on it but i knew from a young age i never liked that stuff like who has time like why do you have time for that to not look thirsty you asked me for my number it is what it is let's talk <laughs> let's talk now nah, you see me if you have my number and I text you and there's long pauses in between, I'm going to get antsy and tizzic. And that's why I'm going to be giving that one word answer. Cause first of all, I'm a phone girl. Talk to me. All right. But if you don't have time to speak to me in a punctual time and within seconds of answering my message, do not text me. Text me when you have time. Text me when you have time. Cause I don't have the end. Listen, man, I got turned off mad quick. eh? <laughs> and I've witnessed that. I've experienced that recently. So and I pulled somebody up on that. And I'm not afraid to do that either. Do not text me if you don't have time. Okay? So what if someone is, like, at work, and then they text you, you're at work, and then, like, you know, they don't, like, you obviously caught a break, but he left his break, like, mm-hmm. like come on, can't mm-hmm. you wait till the, mm-hmm. he's finished work? So here's my rule. My rule is I need phone conversations. The only time that you are allowed to text me is when we are not able to text, meaning you're at work, I'm at work, and we can do a one-two. That's the understanding. I'm okay with that. But when it's after hours, you have no business texting me. I need to hear that voice real quick. (laughs) I need to hear the background. I need to hear all that. Yep. Okay, okay. Okay, so (laughs) let's stay on that a little bit. Okay. (laughs) So basically, you're considering, like, 8 o'clock, y'all both should be at home kick off if this is someone you're talking to yes um and he's texting you texting you texting you you trying to call him you don't answer the call but you text me text huh. me. is that a red flag for you that is 100 percent a red flag who's doing that <laughs> listen to me listen to me okay am i at, at an age where i'm not holding my tongue for nothing There's no reason for you to be leaving work or be have left work and be in your circumference and texting me. And especially if I call you no answer phone, are you texting me still? No, 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 no. It depends on how much I like you enough that I would entertain even asking you what's that about. If not, I'm my cutoff game is very, very sweet. Like I don't I don't waste my time no more. Because I know out of experience where that goes, where that's coming from. Right? I don't want to... There's no excuse for that. You're literally texting me. If I call you, answer your call. There's no reason. To me, there's no, oh, maybe something else is happening. No, no, no. you doing something you're not supposed to do. Okay? You might as well just not text me so I don't have this suspicion. <laughs> do you get what I mean? <laughs> so, yeah. No. Not allowed. Not having it. Will not happen for me. It will not happen around me. And, yes. Next girl. All right, you guys, that's a wrap for chapter two. Stay tuned for chapter three coming right up next week. And thank you so much for tuning in. As always, you guys, love, peace, and blessings. Mm-hmm.